Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door, and I'm out here standing in a virtual sea of Canada Mayflower. It's so cool to see these flowers and see how far they've spread out here. It's actually May 10th here at 2,700 feet in the Appalachian Mountains, and I can thank this display for the last ice age that pushed these northern species south. And as they retreated, some of these species remained in the cooler pockets and the cooler temperatures of higher elevation. This is basically a northern plant that you can find in the mountains down through the spine of the Appalachians. Today's episode is on the Canada Mayflower, a little bit about its biology and natural history, and some of its ethnobotany, so stay tuned. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. Canada Mayflower is another one of our spring ephemerals. I'm fascinated by these plants because the only way to see them is to really go into the woods. And you have to go into the woods at a certain time of the year, and that's in the early spring. And if you miss it, you have to wait until the following year to see them. They're really unique. You can find Canada Mayflower in a lot of different woodlands, but they seem to prefer a yellow birch maple kind of assemblage. And in fact, here I do have some red maples, yellow birches, and black birches, and that's what they're growing now. You can identify Canada lily as it first comes up by a single zigzag stem with two or three leaves on it. Some individuals are flowering and some individuals are not. And there's some that say it's the second year that they flower. They form a carpet across the forest floor because they spread by underground rhizomes. So all of these plants are probably part of a single spreading rhizome. The scientific name of Canada the lily is Myanthemum canadense. And Myanthemum means, not too surprising, May flower. It's also known as Canada May lily or false lily of the valley. When it flowers, it'll have 12 to 25 beautiful, delicate little starry shaped flowers. Folklore says that gamblers sometimes kept the root of this plant in their pockets for good luck in a card game. Indigenous peoples use this for treatment of sore throats and headaches, but it seems to have some toxic properties to it. After it flowers, it'll produce green berries, which will turn red later in the season. These berries are likely toxic, but I did read some things that people did use them for jams and jellies at some point. Mice and grouse seem to prefer to eat these, so it does have a wildlife value. Another name for Mayflower is Bead Ruby because of these red berries. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about Mayapple, how to identify it, and when to see it flowering. Remember, if you like my channel, please subscribe to it and give me a like and I love hearing comments from my viewers. But thanks for watching this episode, Nature at Your Door.